Uh, this is a partner webinar, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do it together with MFH, uh, which is um, a space heating manufacturer. We are focusing our uh, solutions on uh, electric hot water heating, uh, basically photovoltaic powered hot water heating. And together we are presenting our solutions today. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, the slides of the presentation today will be provided by us after the session. You will receive an email with all the slides that you see today. Good. Um, I want to start with a short introduction. Uh, my name is Reinhard Hofstetter. At MyPV, I'm responsible for uh, education and training and for uh, R&D. Uh, partly and uh, it's uh, a real pleasure to welcome all of you ladies and gentlemen and with me in the webinar room is uh, my colleague Talal and um, Talal please uh, just a few words introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah from my side my background is as an electrical engineer I hope uh, is you getting double voice because yeah I'm switching off yeah. my microphone Okay, perfect. So I have been working previously as a research assistant in the field of solar energy. And now I'm a part of my PV for a couple of months. Together with Reinhardt and Jason, we will start presenting our solution. So Reinhardt, over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Talal. Um... Talal has uh, taken over the part of international sales at MyPV from my side. So I'm focusing more on the training stuff and that's why we are doing the webinar here together. Um, head of uh, MyPV is uh, Dr. Gerhard Rimpler, Managing Director. His background is uh, ba the basic know-how of our company, which is the solar electronics design. And uh, he's um, yeah, the Managing Director, but also the inventor of the solutions that we are going to show you today. Um, our history is a relatively young one. Uh, we have our 10 year anniversary in 2021 this year. And our latest milestone is uh, the new company building where we are going to move uh, in, um, yeah, in autumn maybe. And this is really necessary now because we, um, we have to provide all the production capacities for the, for the increasing requests on these solutions. So enough uh, uh, about my PV, uh, Pia, now it's your yeah. turn. Sure. Uh, let me uh, just uh, give you a few words about uh, MFH system. Uh, so we are a little bit uh, older company in that sense. Um, it was actually started uh, by Achim Nierbeck uh, back in uh, 1995 uh, called Jupiter Heights System in Deutschland. Uh, or heating system, uh, if it's international. Um, Achim saw a clear need uh, to have a surface heating uh, material delivered uh, to um, um, installers and uh, system integrators using a drywall uh, on the floor heating uh, technology. And um, the company was very successful, uh, also noticed by a uh, big name, uh, Danfo, uh, who in 2007 took over the company uh, with the um, plan to be uh, the world leader in uh, surface heating uh, technology. Um, but it, they, they came into some troubles after some years. Um, uh, with uh, managing a lot of different companies they bought in that period. Um, and uh, in 2012, um, uh, Achim Nierbeck, uh, together with uh, Andreas Pipans and uh, Daniel Shushan, um, decided uh, to uh, make a, a management buyout uh, and uh, take the company back and uh, founded the MFH system, which is uh, then... Uh, uh, that the extension of Jupiter uh, with uh, the focus on uh, surface heating technology, uh, but not only water-based surface heating technology, but also electrical heating, uh, and to build solutions um, for their clients. Uh, and clients including also 
OEM partners um, and distribution sales that was new to the company. Um, if we look at uh, basically what uh, we uh, um, produce, uh, we have a ventilation, uh, so a, a decentralized ventilation solution um, that fits very uh, perfectly into uh, existing housing and new houses. Uh, to give uh, fresh air with a, a market leading heat recovery uh, technology. Um, we have a electrical um, panel heating system, so on the floor heating um, that can uh, provide a full room heating. Uh, it's called the Energy IQ. Uh, it's based on the same principles as our water based systems. Um, and I'll, uh, I think that there was a mix up in, in, in it. Uh, so I'll, I'll go to the, the latest technology we have, and that's what we are gonna talk about today, is our e-energy carbon uh, panel heating foils. Um, and you would see uh, together with uh, my PV's uh, type of systems, it fits perfectly for the, for the new generation of uh, heating technology. Um, yeah, that was it. There, there's one slide missing, but uh, we'll figure that out. So I will take over from here. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. So uh, now we, it's our turn. So presenting the hot water solution and space heating from photovoltaics. So our slogan is the future is going to be the electric. So the point about this is that previously the water heating was carried out through solar thermal collectors on the rooftops, but with the passage of time, the cost for solar collector had remained high over the time. It hasn't come, it hasn't decreased over the time. So what has evolved is the price of photovoltaics, which has been decreased tremendously and over the period of time it's become more feasible to to heat up your water and space heating through photovoltaics <clears throat> what comes next is the idea about heating electric uh, heat water heating electric and space heating so our solution is the is feasible for water heating in the form of old buildings as well as in the new buildings. What difference comes out is that we recommend space, space heating in the new buildings because the modern construction has more insulated building and better and requires less energy to heat up the new buildings as it can be seen through the pie chart figure that in the form of old building, it's a quite huge amount of energy to require for space heating. So it's not a more feasible solution in the old buildings. But in case of old new buildings, infrared panels and electrical space heatings are the solution which can be integrated with my PV products. What comes next is the as more self-consumption awareness is coming and some of the legislations around different countries are being introduced. So there's a focus that more battery systems has to be integrated with the PV system. But what the drawback is that the battery system costs huge uh, investment, huge capital investment, but what my PV gives as a cost effective alternate for the battery system and as well as you can store uh, more thermal energy in case of water tank and underfloor heating. But one point to be mentioned importantly is that the our system is not directly competitive to the battery. It is because our system is also compatible with the battery systems as well and our system gives priority to the battery charging and then towards the water heating because once once a battery system has been charged 
current can be taken out, but in case of tank or underflow heating, it's quite obvious. You cannot take back any energy from there. A usual uh, comparison of the system for self-consumption is that in Austria, most of the most of the households are having five kilowatt peak systems. And when a household has only PV system without any storage devices, so the self-consumption is pretty low, which stands around 30%. So as a, as a system comes with battery system, you can increase your self-consumption up to 65%. But the drawback is that that it requires a huge capital investment. And likewise, if we use my PV solution without the battery, you can increase your self-consumption up to as high as 75% without having a bigger cost compared to the battery. So other point is that when you combine a battery system with the with the my PV products that can increase as high as 85%. Yeah, as you can see in the red mark. Then moving towards the right side, so it gives a outlook how our system works is that the our system gives priority to the battery charging. So in during the peak time First, the battery is charged, and likewise, when the battery is full, the second peak is given to the water, water hot, um, hot water storage. So let's move towards the next slide. Is about the my PV power code. So we really recommend to the sales force to use it because it gives an intuitive look and gives an assessment how how much you need a what recommendation of my PV products can be used in your condition. For example, if you have an electric vehicle, your electricity tariff, other different, um, uh, different heat tariffs, so all along the, these can be combined and give you a look which solution perfectly fits you. And it gives an estimation of the products. So let's see what we can, uh, there's a portfolio for my PV. So I will be discussing the Elva product, which is uh, which is the only DC product uh, in our portfolio. So this product is directly alternate for the solar thermal collector. And the difference is only the, you have a PV panel, four to eight panels on your rooftop and other point is that it's using the cable instead of pipe. So that cable connection is uh, directly connected to the MC4 connectors of the Elva in your tank. And this unit has a, has a power of two kilowatt. What comes with it is that this product has also AC backup, which can be used during the night time and the product and the backup is around 754. So here's an example of Elva product installed in the single family home. So the user has installed it since 2014. So it's around seven years now. And what is the special thing is that he's using, he's turning off his heater, the primary boiler completely during the summertime and Elva is heating the water completely during the summertime and in the winter it's running in the combination with with the boiler. So now some um, data from the Elva which you will see in the slides when Reinhardt will send you in the email so as I mentioned that the DC has it works in a linear power state. So how much PV power is available? It works linearly, has MPP tracker inside. So optimal use of sunlight and other AC backup and 
yeah there's the target temperature knob with through which you can set the temperature as well <clears throat> so moving towards reinhardt so reinhardt will present ac solutions Yes, I will. Thank you very much, Talal. Um, yeah. We are leaving the solution from the DC side. Uh, as Talal mentioned, Elva is the only DC product that we have. And uh, in that way, it's uh, the only solution that can be compared one by one with uh, solar thermal systems. We are using all the energy from the roof for heating only. By the way, the immersion heater Elva uh, can be assembled in a hot water tank or in a storage tank, a hot water boiler or in a storage tank. So it makes no difference if it is in contact with drinking water or uh, space heating water. But uh, it's now my turn and I'm going to talk about on-grid uh, solutions for hot water heating. Here we have AC products. Um, accordingly, the name changes from Elva, which means uh, nothing else than electric water heater, to AC Elva for alternating current product. And the question in an on-grid PV system is, how much excessive power is available because the idea is that we are just using excessive energy for heating so only the energy that would be fed into the power grid and this has to be detected somehow one way to detect that is the mypv power meter this is an accessory part it uh, is installed uh, in the electric cabinet next to the utility meter of your energy supplier and <coughs> Sorry, and it has uh, three CT clamps, which makes the installation very easy. So with the C3 clamps, uh, it, measures, uh, it measures the, um, the flow of the energy on all three phases, and it communicates with the other MyPV device via Ethernet. So it sends the excessive power information over Ethernet to the MyPV device. Um, by the way, it can also be used in a single phase system. It's not necessary to install all these three uh, CT clamps here. Uh, the clamps are um, work for a 16 amp uh, current measurement and upon request we can also uh, deliver bigger CT clamps for example for commercial building projects. Um, the normal way to install the power meter for communication is that all MyPV devices and also the power meter are connected to the router of the building via an Ethernet cable. Um, just in case that there is no router available, just in case that there is no network at the customer's place, it's also possible to directly connect the power meter to the other MyPV device. Uh, in that case, it's not a standard Ethernet cable, then it's a so-called crossover Ethernet cable. But it's also possible to use this without a router in between. The accessory part that we have shown uh, to you, the power meter, is, is just an option. It's not necessary to use it in every case. For example, if there is another signal source which is already compatible to our communication, we can use their meter signal and we do not have to install the power meter then. And there is a huge number of compatible signal sources. Uh, there are smart home manufacturers, there are battery manufacturers, uh, because as Talal mentioned, we are not competing with the battery. Yes, we are a cheap alternative to batteries, but we have a number of um, successful corporations with battery manufacturers as well. And finally, there are also uh, several um, PV inverter manufacturers, which already can provide the excessive power information to my PV. Good, and the first way to use excessive energy in an on-grid system is the AC LVE. The mechanical dimensions of this product here are exactly the same as they are for ELVA. The immersion heater is uh, 45 centimeters long and there's a 1.5 inch connection thread which uh, makes the installation in a boiler or in a storage tank very easy. 1.5 inches, this is a very common dimension for uh, the installation on storage tanks. And um, um, compared to ELVA, AC ELVA has a bigger power range. It has a power range from zero to 3000 watts now and it's not directly connected to the panels. It takes the power always from a socket, uh, but it takes, it takes uh, just the amount of power out from this socket, which is available as excessive power. So this is something that changes all the time. Not only the PV power on the roof is changing permanently. We are um, 
also switching on and off loads in the building, the TV or whatever, and the balance in the feeding point and the amount of excessive power, the amount which is too much in the building, changes permanently. And the um, purpose of our systems is that we are always adjusting uh, according to this available power level. So ACLE can be adjusted from zero to 3000 watts um, and uh, the information uh, can be provided by the power meter or the excessive power information can be provided by a compatible manufacturer. Um, we recommend to use a separate fuse for this socket here. It's a three kilowatt element and we do not want that the fuse uh, is blown uh, because there are also other loads on this electric circuit. And for all electricians who do not feel comfortable uh, using a European socket uh, for a three kilowatt device, I have good news, you are allowed to cut off the plug. You can make a hard wiring, a connection with terminal blocks if you like to do so. This has no influence on the warranty. So if you don't like the plug, cut it off, no problem from our side. Good, um, technical data is on the next slide. Now we are uh, looking on an example of the AC LVE as in the, ex as in the example uh, that Talal showed, showed us with Elva. This is also installed in a storage tank, not in a hot water boiler, but it of course would also be possible to use it in a hot water boiler. Uh, the customer here has a 10 kilowatt peak PV system and with the AC LVE, he has a power control range from zero to three kilowatts. If he wants to have a bigger power range for adjusting the excessive power, he would be able to use several AC LVEs uh, as far as uh, there are connection thread available uh, in the storage tank, of course. Another way would be uh, to use an Ecto 9S, which I'm going to show you later on. And then he would have a power range from zero to 9,000 watts. In that case, the excessive power uh, signal is provided by the MyPV power meter and um, he's also using our data cloud uh, called mypv.live uh, to uh, detect the, um, the performance of the, of the unit and uh, to have uh, remote access from outside the network also. Uh, the ACLVE in that case is assembled at the bottom of the tank, uh, which um, has the purpose of preheating the whole system. The advantage here is clear. It has a, a big storage volume available, so you can increase the self-consumption ratio to maximum. Uh, the disadvantage is due to that big volume. The heating takes a longer time. So another approach would be to install the uh, device on a higher level of the tank and due to the lower uh, due to the smaller volume above the heater the target temperature would be achieved faster uh, both um, philosophies have their advantages uh, both is possible in that case it's a preheating system and we uh, see this also in this uh, relatively low temperature level uh, which uh, is detected from the data cloud uh, nevertheless also, um, having just three kilowatts of, of um, control power, he increased the self-utilization ratio of his PV system from 30% to 75%. And, at, and this is possible at the times lower investment compared to the investment costs of a battery. Um, all the technical data of the ACLVE is on that slide. We are not going into every detail here. As I mentioned, you are receiving the slides uh, later on after the webinar anyway. Uh, one thing that is very important to us is our way of uh, doing the linear power control. We are not using so-called thyristor controllers. We are not using phase angle control. Our power stages, and this is what we are basically are, uh, a manufacturer of power stages, uh, technically speak speaking, they are working uh, according to the same principle as a PV inverter does. So with our solutions, you can rely on a grid compliant solutions. And uh, especially for the German speaking countries, uh, Switzerland, Austria and Germany, we meet all the requirements from the, from the grid operator in doing so. Good. And then there's another solution for hot water heating. It's called Actor. Um, what is the difference to ACLVE? The ACLVE has the advantage you have an all-in-one solution. So the immersion heater, the heating element 
is integrated on the power stage. In that way, you can uh, make a, a better price uh, when you are offering to the customer. Uh, but this can also be a disadvantage. The ACLA is a disadvantage, for example, if there is already an existing immersion heater. And uh, the question is, uh, can't we use this standard heater uh, also for the future and make him uh, linear power control as a, at the later stage? And the answer is, uh, yes, we can. We can do this by the actor. So we have uh, removed the immersion heater from the ACLVE. What is left is uh, the power stage. And instead of the immersion heater, we have a, a, a socket here. And into this socket, you can uh, plug uh, immersion heaters. You can plug uh, infrared panels there or electric heating mats um, and make a standard on off electric heater uh, PV ready at the later stage. So the actor comes with uh, some good unique sales points. Number one is the size. Uh, it uh, has a power range of also three kilowatts as ACLVE, and it has a color touch display, which uh, enable a very intuitive control of that thing. For example, the uh, optional boost backup and uh, backup with power from the grid or from the battery is always an option at our products. Uh, it can be adjusted um, with just a few clicks on the display. This is very easy to handle. Then there's the advantage of plug. Uh, everything is pluggable, which makes the installation time uh, relatively short. So not only the load is pluggable here, also the communication wiring. Of course it is, it's an Ethernet plug, but also the temperature sensor. And one temperature sensor is always with the extra in the box. It comes pre-wired on this uh, orange uh, plug here. And if the, uh, if the device is installed in a way as we see it on the right side, uh, which means above uh, um, a cable cover, then all the wires, all the cables, uh, they uh, cannot be seen uh, because of that cover. And then it, it looks like uh, a, a real a nice installation. Then it's look, it looks like the way as we uh, want to have our products installed. Good, um, technical data here. Um, we can um, use any resistive load. Uh, the actor is able to detect the nominal power of the load, which means you can also connect a two kilowatt load here and the actor will detect the nominal power of that load. He's not going to send three kilowatts to a two kilowatt unit, of course, and therefore you do not have to do a separate adjustment. So what is uh, absolutely no problem? is that you connect immersion heaters here for hot water heating, for example. But to be clear, especially with the corporation uh, together MyPV with MFH, uh, you cannot make an MFH system linear power controlled here because uh, the power control of MFH works in another way. They are using a, a transformer and so the MFH heating system cannot be connected to the actor. What we are going to show you today is MyPV as a solution for hot water system and MFH as a solution for electric space heating system. So we are uh, not directly connected technical, technically with each other, but together we can offer a complete solution for the building. Then there's also a bigger version of the Actor. It's called Actor 9S. Now it's a three-phase product. It uh, has a power range of nine kilowatts. And when you're looking on uh, three-phase power stages on the market, you will see that they are always just controlling one phase linearly um, in most of the situations from zero to three kilowatts. And uh, in case that there is more than enough excessive power available, they are just switching another phase, uh, a second one or a third one. The Actro 9S is exactly working according to the same principle, but what can we do better? Uh, we can change the control phase from output 1 to output 2 to output 3, which means the Actro 9S is able to control each of its three outputs linearly according to excessive PV power, not at the same time, but one after the other. And um, what is very important to know for retrofitting when you want to make a um, three-phase immersion heater PV ready, le ready later on is uh, that we need a neutral conductor. The connection always has to be a star wiring. It does not work in a delta wiring. So we need the neutral conductor um, to ensure that we can detect the load. 
for all of you who want to have the security that all components fit together, of course, there are also accessory parts, a three kilowatt immersion heater for the actor and a nine kilowatt immersion heater for the actor 9S. And the standard uh, operation mode is the hot water operation. And again, the excessive power information can be provided by the power meter or by a compatible manufacturer. Um, using a 9 kilowatt heater at the bottom of the tank uh, is possible. It's maybe the standard application. The disadvantage here is that uh, it takes a long time to heat up the whole volume. Advantage is that we have a huge volume for storage capacity, but it takes a long time to heat up um, the, the temperature to a comfort level at the top of the tank. So there's maybe a better way to heat up a huge storage tank. And uh, in that way, we are using the Actor 9S Advantage. Uh, it's able to control each one of these three power outputs linearly. So for example, if there is uh, one kilowatt of excessive power, we will do the linear power control at the heater on the top. And if there are more than three kilowatts, let's say four kilowatts of excessive power, we will switch the heater on the top static with up to three kilowatts maximum. And we are changing the linear control output to the heater in the middle. And in that way, we can heat up the whole volume um, more efficiently. So we have, due to the lower volume above the top heater, uh, the ability to reach the target temperature uh, faster. So this is one advantage here. Um, yeah, all the information um, are of course online available anytime. Also the wiring diagrams, if you want to inform yourself before you buy a product, we are offering all the detailed informations on the website without any registration. So everything is uh, open for your um, download. And now I'm going to uh, give the ball to Pear and to the MFH systems. Yes, thank you, uh, Reinhard. Um, what I'm talking about is, is uh, if the fully electrical house is a model uh, for the future or actually already for now. Um, and uh, let's have a look. Uh, so I, uh, I'm sitting in Denmark, uh, not in our head office in Belm in uh, Germany. Um, and I looked at uh, one of the, the main uh, sources for heating in uh, Denmark, uh, which is an official uh, government site uh, called Spa Energy. Um, and what they were saying about electrical heating. And uh, Basically, they, they were stating uh, it's expensive uh, without really um, giving the right examples. So it's very old examples like uh, uh, electrical uh, radiators and so on. And uh, with that type of, uh, if you would heat a house with electrical uh, radiators that we did in, uh, in the 70s and 80s, um, it would be expensive. So they say, well, if you if you are going to uh, heat with electricity, you should supplement it with something, either a, a heat pump um, or solar power, so a PV uh, system. Uh, then um, it looks much better. Uh, they also give some examples on uh, how you can uh, improve your uh, installation if you're using electrical heating uh, today. Uh, well, what, what is happening over the last 40 years in terms of uh, heat requirement is that it's going to get less and less. Uh, both uh, the way we uh, transport uh, heat and, and the loss we have in transporting that heat, uh, like this decreting, uh, has improved. Um, we are not having uh, so much heat loss as we, we used to do, but also the building are getting better insulated and we have uh, less heat loss. Um, and uh, that, uh, the, the, the best examples I can give is uh, that a passive house, uh, you might only have a heat loss of about 20 watt per square meter, um, which is really low. Um, but what has been, uh, when we talk about ventilation, so the loss we have from uh, the ventilation we have in a house uh, that has uh, been almost equal until now. Uh, 
Only with the new houses, we insulate them so well that nothing get in or out basically. Um, and for that, we also need uh, a good ventilation system to have a, a, a good comfort in, in air quality in the houses. Um, and that's what we combine with our air units as well. Uh, well, uh, if we talk about a uh, new type of uh, uh, heating, uh, also requires new technology and it becomes more and more sophisticated. Uh, both the heating, but also the ventilation part. Uh, and now uh, if you look at it uh, uh, from an investment point of view, uh, it requires higher investment and it requires more maintenance costs. Uh, and that uh, forces a dilemma as well, because um, those who are delivering this new advanced technology, uh, they are having a hard time uh, delivering um, the maintenance in uh, in a in a costly way. Uh, they also are having a hard time in finding qualified people uh, to do the maintenance, uh, and uh, that is really an issue. And um, I'll uh, tell you more about this in a second. Um, something that you all uh, have heard about in your countries um, is that we have to reduce the, the greenhouse gas emission uh, by 50% in the EU. That's the target they set. Uh, we have a very ambitious uh, government here in, in Denmark uh, that uh, wants to do 70% by 2030. Um, I don't think they will uh, reach it, uh, but uh, when politicians speak, it's not always that they really have to commit to what they are saying. Um, but what it, it also says is that uh, when we come to 2050, uh, we, we really have to reduce the emission if we want to have a, a Earth that is worthwhile living at. Uh, and in, in that matter, um, uh, we need almost to be uh, carbon neutral uh, by 2050. Uh, that will require new technology, that will require new type of housing as well. Uh, and it, when it comes to heating, um, what we see a clear trend is that uh, if we can uh, reduce the cost in investment in, in the, the, the heating uh, system, uh, we, we would have to keep it more simple uh, than, uh, for instance, if you, if you take a, a, a water pump and a, a hydronic uh, based uh, on the floor heating. Um, and we can do that uh, by using cables, so electrical cables instead of pipes. Um, by keeping it simple, we also reduce the maintenance cost that we uh, will have to um, uh, do on that. Um, and together with a uh, solar system, uh, system uh, own solar system or PV system, uh, we can provide an alternative to what you know today. Um, here's a, actually a statement from a, a, a German uh, organization that is, uh, uh, it's a consortium uh, or association for surface heating and cooling. Uh, the interesting part on, on this part is that uh, uh, the main contributor or sponsor for, for this association are heat pump and hydronic uh, uh, companies or manufacturers. Uh, but basically what they are saying is that, uh, well, if you have a well insulated house, uh, using electricity generated by a, a own PV system, together with the electrical heating uh, is a very environmental friendly solution. Uh, interesting. Um, and if you look at, at the German GEG, which is um, the building uh, uh, rules uh, or regulations uh, in Germany, uh, they, they actually state uh, that uh, if you um, using electrical heating panel systems, um, together with the uh, own PV uh, system, you have a fully fledged uh, alternative to any uh, heating solution out there. And uh, that's what I'm gonna prove to you. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, saying that uh, we have uh, uh, some standards for housing. 
Uh, and if you combine uh, uh, own PV with uh, our uh, electrical heating panel system, uh, you, you actually can fulfill the requirements in any of those housing types, uh, which is, uh, let's say a common house is a, is a, a 55, um, but uh, still a lot of uh, houses uh, according to the 70 uh, efficiency uh, is built. And uh, the 40 plus is, is the best they can build uh, if we are not uh, considering passive house as well. Uh, I, I took it from the internet. Uh, one of the architects is saying sustainability will be the key concept in construction uh, for the future housing. Um, we need better and more alternative uh, to build a, a future heating uh, in, in housing. And we think we have a, a pretty good uh, alternative uh, to existing technologies here. Uh, it's called e-energy carbon. Um, and what it is, it is a, a heating electrical heating technology or heating panel technology, uh, which we uh, divide in three different uh, classes that we use it for, uh, which is uh, for full room heating. Uh, or for comfort heating that you, you could uh, consider in a, in a bathroom, for instance. Uh, and we use the same technology for moisture mold protection. Um, so uh, what we uh, can with this new technology uh, is actually uh, give the flexibility to install it either in the ceiling uh, and, uh, or in the, in the floor uh, or in the wall. Um, and uh, we have uh, the uh, possibilities that we can uh, uh, cut holes in, in the material, drill or, or, or whatever, put nails in uh, without losing the uh, heating uh, of the foil. Now, what it is, is a, is a very thin uh, piece of carbon. Uh, so it's a one piece material where we uh, integrate uh, uh, strips of copper uh, and then via low voltage, we have a, a fully fledged heating uh, of the surface of uh, this material. Um, it is not a laminated structure that you would uh, find in other uh, type of uh, uh, systems, uh, especially from, from Korea or, or China. Uh, that means also we are uh, very much uh, not having to, to think about that uh, this uh, lamination can uh, dissolve uh, and the heating of uh, the, the film will stop. Um, we can cut holes in it, uh, actually uh, up to uh, 70 millimeter holes, uh, three, three of them in one meter and still have a full functional uh, heating uh, surface. Um, the good thing about uh, uh, heating uh, uh, foil like this is that we have a, a more or less 100% heating coverage of the material. That also means that, that we are able of uh, heating much quicker than any other materials on the market. Uh, we have a different uh, version of it depending on where we want to install it. If it's in the floor, what type of flooring we are using? Uh, uh, is it floating or is it uh, underneath uh, tile floors? Um, we have a solution for, for any of those. We can build uh, uh, heating uh, behind uh, plasterboards or in front of them. Uh, and we have different uh, type of uh, heating, what per square meters. So we can offer exactly what is uh, required for uh, the home that we are installing. Um, uh, all foils that we deliver is uh, pre-cut lengths, uh, comes with crimp connector and a wire. And why that? Uh, we don't want um, installers to be on a construction site having to crimp uh, the connectors and uh, if they are a little bit loose, uh, it could actually cause a, a hotspot situation or even a fire in worst case. Uh, and it is a simple system. Um, it's, it's basically uh, what is shown on a, on a picture here. You have a, a, a heating foil. 
uh, which is uh, then connected to a transformer. We use a 36 volt uh, low voltage. Um, and uh, we have a thermostat. In this case, is a touch or Wi Fi thermostat. Um, and uh, we have uh, also, now it's in German, uh, a sensor. Uh, that can either be a floor sensor or it could be uh, actually the thermostat's own room sensors that uh, is used or in a combination of both. And that's basically it uh, and the transformer, of course. Those four items, uh, with that, we, can, uh, we don't need any space, really. Um, and it's very simple uh, using uh, electrical cables to uh, co uh, connect those uh, pieces together. Uh, here are some of the pieces more in details. Um, we have some new uh, transformers, so we can actually uh, uh, support uh, up to 3.2 kilowatts uh, with a single transformer. And it has like uh, up to 10 connections. Uh, so it could be uh, 10 different foils that uh, we would uh, connect uh, to. Um, and uh, the, the thermostats are intelligent thermostats. Uh, they will save a lot of uh, energy uh, because they, uh, uh, it's an on-off technology uh, in heating and uh, that can save you up to 60% in energy cost. Um, it's all made in Germany. It's all certified quali uh, uh, quality uh, in terms of we use TÜV Rheinland to uh, certify the whole solution. Uh, the foil is produced in Germany. Um, we are participating in uh, the, the different uh, consortium in, in Germany as well uh, as a full-fledged member. Uh, so, so it is one piece of quality, uh, one solution. Um, just uh, to give you an example uh, of uh, houses that we actually have built with our system and with our own PV uh, uh, system, uh, here is a house uh, according uh, to the standard 55, um, 140 square meters for uh, person household uh, was built in 2017. Uh, and uh, they also use a, um, a hot water preparation. Uh, and if you take all those costs, including, so, uh, so both for the heating and for the hot water, they have a, a total uh, energy bill uh, of 85 euro a month, uh, which is uh, rather competitive. Here's another example uh, of a house, a little bit smaller house. Uh, it uh, also has um, hot water and uh, controlled ventilation uh, with a heat recovery uh, above 90% and a five kilowatt uh, PV uh, system. Uh, here is the, the total investment in, in installing the, the heating foils. Um, and uh, if you look at uh, the, the yearly uh, uh, additional costs uh, to uh, heat up this house uh, is, uh, is about 668 euro or 55 and a half uh, per month. Uh, so relative low. Um, and if you combine uh, own PV with uh, uh, our heating foil, you, you actually have a very competitive solution. And in terms of total investment, um, I think you would come in underneath uh, 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 a heat pump with a, a underwater, or oh, sorry, uh, with an underfloor based uh, water uh, heating system. Uh, so, so we are rather competitive with this solution. Uh, uh, here's how we uh, put out uh, the, the heating foil in the ceiling um, because it's a radiant heat, uh, infrared heat. Um, we only need 42% two, uh, coverage of uh, the surface in the ceiling because it's more effective in the ceiling. Um, and uh, we can accomplish uh, full room heating for any of those rooms. Here's just a few examples of uh, um, how we do it uh, in underfloor heating. This is a bathroom uh, where we put the, the heating foil uh, into uh, the, the plaster mass uh, for the tiles. 
And here we do the same. Uh, uh, what you see is here, he's putting on uh, the heating foil uh, on the wall. Um, and it, it goes into the plaster mass uh, that will be used for the wall. Um, ceiling heating. Um, and in terms of build height, uh, four millimeter is about uh, uh, as low as it gets. Uh, so you have a, the heating foil itself is only 0 0.4 millimeter. Um, you, you, ha you have a, a millimeter, maybe two, uh, you use uh, uh, to put on uh, the, the heating foil uh, to the uh, ceiling, and uh, then you uh, put a plaster mass on top of it, and it becomes one system. Now, uh, just to uh, um, recap uh, some of the things uh, we do with e-energy carbon and a uh, own PV system, and why we think it's a good combination. Um, in terms of uh, e-energy compared to other uh, technologies, uh, you need less money uh, to invest uh, in, a, in a heating system in a house. Uh, and that saving is a uh, good money to invest in a uh, own PV system. Um, and it, it's actually uh, very competitive uh, when it comes to the total costs on investment uh, compared to any other systems. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, electricity bill for heating, it will be uh, quite low. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, you would uh, contribute to zero carbon emission uh, by having your own PV system. Uh, and if you then uh, would take the additional uh, electricity from a, a green uh, energy like wind power, uh, then uh, we are on the right track for the future in terms of heating uh, cost and, and uh, use. Uh, it has a, a, when I discussed this uh, with, uh, with a heating specialist also here in Denmark, uh, uh, what we are looking at is uh, they say, oh, uh, uh, using a lot of electricity for, for uh, for heating uh, will be uh, giving spikes in our networks. Um, and I said, yeah, well, if you have your own PV system, you avoid those spikes because you offload the, the national grid in that matter. Uh, so it has a lot of positive effect. And I think uh, for us, it's uh, clear that it, this is a, a future uh, a heating solution that is sustainable also according to those uh, goals that any government uh, around Europe has uh, with uh, lowering the carbon emission. Uh, just a, a few things uh, on uh, the advantage of uh, our e-energy uh, carbon. Uh, the versatility uh, that you can install it uh, in ceiling, uh, wall or floor. Um, depending on if it's a new house or you retrofit uh, uh, existing house, we have a solution where we can put the heating wherever you want it uh, and quite effective. Oops, uh, let me just. Uh, uh, space saving, uh, well, this is a, a, when you do the total cost uh, uh, calculation on, uh, on uh, what it costs to put in a new heating system, uh, the total cost uh, is lower uh, and space, uh, is a part of that. Uh, most people forget to, to take into account that they need a boiler room or, or room for their uh, heat pump. Um, and that can be quite expensive depending on uh, where you are living. Um, so, so we can actually uh, save space um, and therefore also save cost. Uh, in terms of uh, flexibility, as I said, there are only four pieces uh, you need to put together and you have a full-fledged uh, heating uh, for your house. Uh, it doesn't get more simple than that. We don't have to convert into water or anything else. Uh, we use the electricity directly to heat. Uh, and when I said it's an on-off heating, um, you, can, uh, you can basically heat a room in 10, 15 minutes and depending on uh, the configuration. 
that also means that we can we can uh, put in a place uh, a, a thermostat that can control this. Uh, so you set up a schedule saying, for instance, uh, I want it warm uh, in the bathroom uh, from eight to or six to eight. Uh, and then I'm first home at six o'clock again. In between there, we uh, just uh, shut off the uh, energy and uh, put in a lower value so that uh, the house doesn't get extremely cold. Uh, but if it's a well insulated house, it doesn't anyhow, it will probably lose uh, uh, four or five degrees. Uh, but it, it means we uh, we only heat when it's needed and in those rooms where we are uh, using. Uh, and there, thereby you can, uh, with a uh, intelligent uh, thermostat, you can you can actually save up to 60% energy uh, from that. In terms of options, uh, we have a, a different e-energy carbon uh, solution uh, going from uh, 60 to 220 watt per square meter. So we can accomplish any modern house or new house or existing house uh, with a solution. Um, and uh, in the future, we might even go further down uh, than uh, 60 watts. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's very pleasant. Uh, you won't feel that there's something that is uh, radiating uh, on you. Um, and at the same time, we uh, we are faster in heating than any other system uh, out there. Uh, we use low voltage because we can really put our system on the wall uh, and in the ceiling, and uh, don't uh, we we are following the the ISO standards for uh, how you put heating in a in a house. Um, it's all safe and tested. Uh, and that, that is the, the most important thing for, for this type of uh, solution. So it's a very compatible solution uh, from our side uh, uh, to uh, uh, surface heating uh, solution out there. And together with a combined with a, with a own PV system, this is a really uh, a solution that can be used uh, here and now, but also in the future uh, housing system. I think that was about it for me. And this is a nice picture of our uh, headquarter, Germany. Um, and welcome to come and visit us there as well. Yeah, thank you very much. That was uh, really interesting. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is basically uh, the proof of the message that MFH gave us today. Uh, as far as we see it from my PV, we can uh, work according to the same principle as a heat pump does. We are taking uh, environmental energy uh, to power this building. The, the heat pump takes the energy by evaporating a cooling liquid and we take uh, the energy from the environment by using a PV system. What can be saved in that way is the, the conventional boiler room and all the piping. And if at the end of the year we use uh, less backup power from the grid than the compare system with the heat pump, it's not only easier to install, it's not only cheaper, then it's also the greener technology, then it's a more sustainable solution using PV and direct electric heating system. And uh, Pia showed us a lot of examples today and we also made our experiences at MyPV uh, and we can we can uh, prove that concept. This uh, single family home that we have here uh, is in Upper Austria in our province. And instead of investing in a huge boiler room, the, the owner of the building said, I'm investing in photovoltaics. And he uh, created a single family home with 11 kilowatt peak on the roof. And this is really the future. We are making our uh, energy uh, ourselves. And what I like very much in that example is the inclination of the roof here. Even in Austrian conditions at my country, this roof uh, um, remains free of snow during winter time uh, due to its inclination here. And this is, of course, something that the people, the planners, the architects, uh, and the owners have to consider when they are do the planning of the building. When you also want to support your space heating system to a, a huge amount uh, during the year with power from PV, uh, the, the PV orientation and the inclination of the panels uh, is an important fact. Um, 
to be honest, uh, in that building, this is our own uh, reference. Uh, there was another space heating system used. Uh, it's not an MFH, uh, MFH system, but uh, the, the message and the proof of concept is basically the same. Uh, with a direct electric heating system, uh, the owner of the building achieved an annual performance and annual operation costs of just 750 euros. And this uh, amount of money included electricity, hot water heating with MyPV and electric space heating as well. So this is the future of modern buildings. We are replacing the whole piping, the whole conventional building systems uh, because the demand for energy for space heating gets lower and lower with the increasing thermal standard of the buildings that we are built today. Uh, here's a, a short screenshot, by the way, this is uh, a screenshot from the MyPV Data Cloud for installers. It offers the chance to have remote control on the customer systems and for all the final customers, uh, it offers the chance to do a data recording of the performance of the MyPV hot water solutions and you see also the uh, increase of the temperature. So this is just a side story, just two screenshots at the end. And um, what I really want to recommend uh, for all of you who are not privately interested today, uh, check our website as an installer, as a, as a craftsman. Uh, you have uh, maybe uh, the chance to purchase our solutions from a distributor, respective from a wholesaler. We are already uh, increasing our sales network. It's very well developed in the German speaking countries. and. Uh, Talal is working hard on, on uh, increasing our uh, sales network also for other countries. Um, a very impor inf uh, important uh, source for information is also YouTube. Beside the MyPV homepage, of course, uh, a video that I really want to recommend. Um, yeah, it's, it's in German actually, but uh, YouTube offers very good translations on subtitles. Uh, is, is that video here. We have... Um, recorded with a camera uh, above the screen here how simple it is to uh, install and to adjust an actor so for all of you who are not used to work with the devices this is a good chance to get familiar uh, for the first time with these solutions and to see how easy it is to um, do a setup for hot water heating good um pair we have Yo. to say goodbye i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, uh, thank you uh, for for joining us, and thank you, Reinhard. Uh, uh, and looking forward to uh, get a lot of uh, uh, feedback. Uh, and we, we we are definitely there to help you uh, with more choices uh, than you had before. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your team play, for our team play pair, and uh, all the best. For you ladies and gentlemen have a good evening wherever you are all the best goodbye yeah. goodbye to you bye